Kevin Coy here, Kevin's Micro Homestead at SelfRelientLife.com. Here's the micro part. Got a little homestead part going on over there. See the duck? That's official homestead. Got a little duck barn over there. And, so there, and there's vegetable starts, so that makes it homestead. So micro homestead right here. So we got our, uh, we were doing sand before the last time we talked. And uh, so we got our slab in here for our house. All our plumbing is roughed in. We got a kitchen sink. We got a bathroom sink. You probably can't see it, but a toilet goes right there. This is our shower. And this little uh, stub out right here is gonna be for the uh, washer and dryer, sitting right on the end of the shower here. So we got a 10 by 10, I'm getting all wet. We got a 10 by 10 room right here, which is our bath utility mechanical, okay? Our hot water tank, our washer dryer, our bath all kind of mixed in right here in one room. And then we got this nice big patio slab out here which is going to be a covered porch. You can see the uh, little brackets over there to, for the beams to car carry up on the uh, the porch. Right now, I'm slabs wet because they're curing, so we keep them wet so they slow cure and they don't crack in the sun. Because I spent you know a lot of money on this, so we we've got about. Uh, how many yards of concrete have we got in this all together? 18 and a half. 18 and a half yards at 4,000 pounds per yard. We are not going to blow away. It's pretty heavy. And then we're gonna bolt the house to it. You can see these bolts sticking out of the wall. This is, this is the wall is gonna sit right out here. So we got these bolts and we'll bolt the plates of the bottom of the wall onto the slab here, the, the stem wall, if you want to be technical. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be starting framing tomorrow. So have you ever wondered what a house looks like when it first gets delivered to a job site? That's it right there, that's my house. The whole shebang, except for shingles. Pretty compact, talk about a tiny house. That's not very, uh, not very big, so Let's go take a look at it. <clears throat> they just dropped it off the truck, literally. It slid right off the back of the flatbed truck when it came in about uh, 30 minutes ago. So what you're looking at on the top here is these are the pressure treated floor, uh, the wall plates, the sill plates are gonna set on the bottom right here. And then we're gonna frame on top of those going up all the way around the perimeter of the house. And I should say I don't have doors and windows on here too, so I guess technically, but the, the, the framing of the building is sitting right here. Framing. framing and sheeting, yeah. So siding and windows and doors. That's, that's what's missing basically. So we got these big beams right here. And there's some smaller posts laying right underneath here that are uh, six by six. Is that right? So, and then six by twelves or six by tens, these are six by tens. These are gonna carry out on the front the uh, the roof line out of, on the front end of the patio. So we got three beams coming, or three posts coming up, two beams laying on top of them, and then the trusses are gonna sit on there so we don't have trusses on here either. So I guess I'm kind of a liar. It's not my whole house, but it's a lot of it. It's all the walls and everything and all the sheeting. There's a big stack of uh, Two by sixes right here, it's all the framing for the walls. There's 125 of those, I think. They look like that. And then we got some two by fours for the interior framing walls. We got all our sheeting for our walls. That's what this is. There's four by eight, and these green ones are four by nine. They're gonna be on the gable end, so they go up a little above the wall line, and we don't just tie into uh, the top plate and have a sort of a weak gable. And then you come around here, these are the top plates, so these are the bottoms, these are the tops, and the framing goes in between the two, some trim. And then our roofing material, sheeting rather, is right here. And then this monster right here is a uh, 
six by 12, 14 feet long, and that is for the headers over the windows and doors that we're gonna be putting in. So we're gonna build this thing pretty stout. The sheeting on the roof is 5 eighths, that's heavy. And it's really windy around here, and so we really wanna make sure we build this thing to stay put in the wind. I mean, we can get nothing to get 70 mile an hour winds, and we can go higher than that on uh, heavy storm days in the winter time. So we make sure we get this thing built to take the, the wind. And uh, so that's where we're at right now. We're gonna start framing in the morning. I'm just keeping these slabs damp. We just, How long will that take you to frame? Uh, just to frame up the four walls and the interior walls, I'm gonna guess about two days. Uh, you know, that's framing in all the windows and doors and get everything up and sheeted in. So I think we're, uh, and then we're gonna get our trusses delivered hopefully mid next week. And they'll lay those right up on top of the walls. And then we'll start standing those up and blocking them in as we go across and they're going to lay long this is this is a gable in so this, this is a side with the big a facing right on this side and the other side so our our tails of our trusses are going to start out here and go that way so that's it we're coming along we're just going to keep this thing sprinkled all day curing it out real nice this one was done uh, last friday and this one was done yesterday so by the time we start in the morning, we should have, uh, you know, our walls going up pretty fast. So you're going to see a wall, or you're going to see a building starting to form. Which, you know, this this part of the project seems to take a while because we're doing all this foundation work, and we got all the plumbing in, roughed in. Our water pipes kind of sticking up right here, coming out from under the slab over that way. Two weeks. Is, it should be framed and uh, ready for a roof to go on and then we're basically dried in we're shelled in we're ready to put on some siding windows and doors and then start working on the inside of the house we'll start with uh, plumbing and electrical in there get that going through the walls get everything ready to, for insulation and, and we have our inspection processes so we've been inspected up to this point and everything of course passed was otherwise we wouldn't have poured this so we're elevated up a little bit right now, but we're going to be backfilling the ground around the uh, foundation so that it comes back up. Probably within about four inches of that patio slab, a little bit of a step up. And that's nice for the weather when you got the rain coming down. This this patio has actually got a one inch slope from here to the outside, so water should run that way off the slope when it rains in, which it will. The rain and wind tend to come at an angle right here in the winter time. So we're going to have two big picture windows here facing out into the trees and uh, they're going to be uh, a higher grade set of windows. They've got a thicker frame to them so it'll take the pressure of the wind without any problems. If you didn't do that you could have weaker sashes. They'll start bowing and flexing and the next thing you'll break the seal on your window and your window will fog up and it's no good. You can't see out of it so you want to make sure you got a real stout window and frame and you'll see how we go about doing that as we get going here so that's about it for the update we went from playing in the sandbox to standing on the on the uh, floor here and uh, the walls are going to start going up and you'll be able to see what will look like a lot more progress although this has been two weeks of, of work pouring all these uh, foundation pieces and packing in the sand and getting the slabs on and the plumbing and inspections in. so all the inspections we've had already so a lot of work's been done it just looks like you know a big hunk of concrete right now but uh, <laughs> once we get the walls going up then you'll be able to kind of really see how this thing takes shape but if you ever wanted what it looked like to, to, to build and live inside of what basically is a two-car garage stick around subscribe so you don't miss out on all the fun we'll be right here the rest of the summer building this tiny house. I'll see you on the next video.